Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. In today's video, we're going to be doing something a bit different. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to do a basic image edit in Lightroom on an iPad. What I'm going to be showing you should translate to an Android device as well. Before we begin, I do have a request. I have over 2,100 videos on YouTube, and to tell you the truth, I'm running out of ideas. If you have a specific video or video series that you'd like me to do, please let me know. Now, one thing about YouTube comments, there's often a lot of trolls down there, and I just get depressed reading them, so I don't often look at the comments on my YouTube videos. So if you do have a video or video series you'd like to see me do for YouTube, please contact me directly. If you go to my website, anthonymorganti.com, in the lower right hand corner, you'll see this icon. You could click on that and you could message me directly. Just remember to leave your email address so you could see my answer. Also, if you happen to be on my other website, onlinephotographytraining.com, in this follow me section, You'll see there's a little envelope here. You could click on that and email me directly. One thing though, uh, the video that I need to put on YouTube or I'd like to put on YouTube should be popular for a lot of people. Meaning, if you have a very specific, unique problem you're having with, say, Lightroom, um, I don't want to do a video on that and put it on YouTube because it really wouldn't benefit a lot of people. So please keep that in mind. All right, now editing an image in Lightroom on an iPad. When you first open up Lightroom on your iPad or Android device, you'll need to log into your Creative Cloud account. And once you do, you'll be in your album section of the um, iPad, Lightroom for iPad. This album section is kind of like the library module of Lightroom Classic. This is where all your images reside. And if you want to work on one, you could just tap on it. And when you do, it will open that image up in the edit section. And you can see in the far right hand side, we're in this edit panel. And the edit panel is where you could do an auto adjustment or pick a profile. You could adjust light color, effects, detail optics, geometry. Uh, below that are presets. Below that is cropping. Below that are the healing tools. And this will include the remove, heal, and clone brushes. Uh, below that is masking. Below that is lens blur. Now below that is grayed out. This is to apply an edit you just did to the current image. And since I haven't done any edits yet, that is grayed out. And below that is history. So you could go back and forward in history. So we'll go back up to the edit panel. So typically what you would do is you would open up uh, Lightroom on your iPad and you'd find an image. On the lower left-hand side, you'll see I have a section called My Albums. These are kind of like collections in Lightroom Classic. You could just put any image you want into any album you create. And I have an album over here called Landscapes. If I tap on that, you'll see I have a single image there. Let's edit this image. So I'm going to tap on it. And again, when you do, it will open it up in this edit section. Now, before I do anything with light color effects or anything here, what I like to do is crop the image as early in my workflow as pop possible. I really don't need to crop it, but it is very slightly crooked and it's bothering me. So I want to straighten it. And to do that, I will go to the crop tool. In the crop tool towards the bottom, you'll see there's a straighten icon. Just tap on that and you straightened it. Now you'll look at the very bottom of the image. You can see it's 0.09 degrees. So it was just very slightly crooked. Um, but doing that straightened it. You could just come in and move it yourself if you wanted to and straighten it by eye. You could crop by grabbing any handle. If you want to lock the aspect ratio, click on the little padlock. And when you do, when you grab a handle, it will lock the aspect ratio. You could choose your aspect ratio right here that you want to do. I'll stay with the original. I'll rock, you know, keep it locked. You could rotate and flip the image vertically or horizontally as well. I'm just going to reset this entire adjustment that I just did by clicking right here in this little arrow on the lower right hand side. And then again, click straighten. That's all I wanted to do. I don't want to do any cropping. When you're done with the crop tool, just click on done or tap done and you're done. Now let's do some editing. Um, I'm not going to do an auto edit. Um, I'm happy with the Adobe color profile, but if I weren't, I could click on browse and open up the profile browser and pick a profile. I don't need to just gotta go right to light. 
Now, typically what I do when I adjust any image in any application is I look at the image and see what jumps out at me. And to me, it uh, looks like the shadows are kind of dark. So I'm going to go right to the shadows slider and move that to the right. And I'll bring the highlights to the left. So nothing special so far. Now I want to get a white and or black point. Now, if you're familiar with Lightroom uh, for the desktop, you probably know that there's a couple different ways you could get a white or black point. The most popular way is to hold in the Alt or Option key and then move the slider. Well, there's no Alt or Option key in the mobile version of Lightroom, but you can do that same adjustment. To do it, just take a finger of your free hand and touch the image anywhere. So with my left pointer finger, I'm touching the image on the left hand side of the image, doesn't matter where. And then I'm going to go to that white slider and I'm just going to start moving it to the right and you can see the entire image turns black. Just keep moving it to the right till I see some colors come through. That means I'm starting to clip those color channels. You can see there's a tiny bit of red, little green, and there's white. Where there's white, that means I am blowing out all three color channels. And I don't want to blow out the highlights, so I'm just going to back that off until all that color dissipates. When I'm done, just let go of both fingers, and that's my white point. Same thing for blacks. Take my left pointer finger, put it anywhere on the image, doesn't matter where. Then go to that black slider and move it to left. This time the entire screen turns white. Where I see color come through, that means I'm clipping that color channel. And where black is coming through, I'm clipping all three. And that looks pretty good right there. All right, I'm happy with the light section. Now, before I do anything with color effects, detail optics, or any of that, I think I want to do some masking. So I'm going to go to the masking tool, which is right there. What I want to do is I want to select the sky. I want to mask the sky. To do that, the lower right-hand side of the image, there's a little plus sign. Tap on that and then select the sky. It'll mask the sky. Then I'll do my adjustment. I'm going to go to light. I'm going to add some contrast. I'm going to go to effects. I'm going to add some texture and some clarity. Maybe a touch of dehaze. I'll go to detail. I'll add a little sharpening. Or a little, yeah, a little... I'm going to remove the noise a little bit and add a little sharpening, sorry. All right, so that looks pretty good for the sky. Now, the rest of the image beside the sky, I want to do a mask for that. So I need to add a second mask. To do that, click on this plus sign again or tap it. I'm going to select the sky again, though. Now I'll have a sky selection. Now I need to invert this. To do that, tap right on the mask for that sky. And then I need to invert it, invert mask two. And now you'll see everything but the sky is selected. And here I'm going to go to light and I'm just going to make this part a little brighter. That's it. So I'm done with masking. So when you're done, there's a little done button, the lower right hand corner, tap that. Now let's go to color. One thing to keep in mind with uh, the mobile version of Lightroom, a lot of controls and tools are nested together. For example, if I jump back to light, uh, you'll notice that the tone curve is next to HDR. So if I tap on that, it actually applies the tone curve right on top of the image. So if you want to do something with it, you just adjust it right on the image. So let's say I'm just going to add a little bit of contrast with the tone curve. So something like that. When you're done with that tone curve, just tap on the tone curve icon again, and you're done. Same thing when we jump down to color. There's some nested things here. First of all, we have temp, tint, vibrance, saturation. I don't want to do anything with that. But if I wanted to do color grading, I could tap that and I'll open up the color grading panel. Or if I want to do color mix, I'll tap that and I open up color mix. And I do want to do something with color mix. I want to take the blues, make them a little darker. I want to go to yellow and I want to add saturation to yellow and make it brighter. I want to go to green and I want to add a little saturation of green, and I want to make the greens a little darker. That's really all I wanted to do was the color mix here. So I think that's pretty good. With color, we'll tap that again. Now if I go to effects, this is global. I could add some global clarity and some global texture. I don't really need to though, but it's okay. Add a vignette. Not that much of a vignette. And maybe move the midpoint out. And I think that's all right. Now, uh, one thing about the mobile version of Lightroom, the new AI sharpen or AI denoise, I'm sorry, isn't 
here, so you'd have to use manual noise reduction. Uh, this was shot at ISO. I think this was shot with the Fuji camera, and the or was it a Nikon? It was Nikon uh, Z62 actually. So it was probably ISO 64. So there's really not any noise to worry about anyway. But you know, so that's uh, kind of something I hope they add someday to it. AI noise reduction. I'm not sure the iPad is capable of that yet, though. Um, optics, um, you could do lens corrections if you need be. This is a mirrorless camera, so it doesn't matter. Uh, geometry, nothing to do there. Um, so only last thing I want to do, if you look at the very far right of the image, you'll notice there's a tree just tiny bit coming through. So I want to go to the healing tools, and specifically I want to use that remove brush and I'm just going to take my finger and just paint right over there and just remove those tree branches that were sticking in over there on the right-hand side. And that's it. I'm done. So click the Done button. So I'm done with the healing brush. I'm really done with my edit. So you can see how you could edit very quickly with the iPad. Uh, there's a couple things, though, to keep in mind. First of all, a lot of the tools and controls are nested. So, for example, in light, we have the tone curve. In the color section, we have the color mix and we have color grading. Those are nested together. So what you could do is you could go through each of the tools and see if there's anything nested in that area. That's pretty much it. Um, also, it's missing the higher end better uh, noise reduction that's not available. And there's some other limitations as well. Uh, but you know, overall, though, I think it's still a very robust image editor. And I am kicking around the idea of doing a series on mobile editing with Lightroom that would include the, um, the version for an iPhone, probably be the exact same for an Android device as well. Uh, but not sure how popular that would be, but that could be something that you could message me about. Let me know if that's something you'd like to see me do. So that's it. That's how to edit an image in the mobile version, specifically the iPad version of Lightroom. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. Talk to you guys soon.